Oh, it has been raining all day. The sun just came out. Um, but I still wanted to chat, catch up. Happy Monday. Um, I got my tea ready. Let's go. How do you feel about this angle? I don't know what to do. I just want to be cozy on my uh, my bay window, but I feel like it's like, I don't know. What do you think? Is that better? Now it's crooked. How's that? It's still crooked. How's that? I don't know, guys. I'm just, we're working on it. Okay. Yeah? All right, this feels good. Um, anyway, what I was what I was saying was, uh, we're still crooked. <laughs> okay, can I have my tea back? All right, let's let's Lex talk fashion today. Um, today, mm, mm. so last week we talked about brat and how brat is in fashion and what that means and how to be a rebel and all those other things, right? But but what I'm noticing now is a trend that is moving us back, moving us back into like the 90s. And that's not just talking about clothes wise, uh, you know, the Y2K fashion and stuff like that. But what I'm also noticing is body type, right? So, Here's what I'm noticing. And I don't know, I don't know, tell me if this is like weird or crazy or whatever. But um, obviously there are like different body types that are popular during different times of the century in our country, in America, in the world, right? So like, mm, what could you say? I don't know, like in the 1920s, we had our flapper girls, super skinny, bobby hair. But also in the 1920s, what happened? Women got the right to vote, right? And so like, but in the 1950s, which is a huge difference from your free voting woman to the 1950s where you're a housewife and what body type is popular? The Marilyn Monroe, right? The full-figured hourglass woman. And then... Um, you know, obviously the 60s was Twiggy, uh, super skinny. Once again, women were fighting for rights. The civil rights movement was happening. And, and what I'm noticing, which is so interesting, is that this back and forth between a curvy woman versus the svelte, super skinny woman is when women women's body in fashion, like when women's bodies are in vogue uh, in terms of like super, super skinny, right? Women are, are fighting for certain rights, right? So like, um, but when a fuller figured woman is popular, women are not fighting for their rights in, in the sense of, it, things are okay. Like things are, I wouldn't say okay, because because we're like women are just constantly fighting for rights. But in the sense of, I would say when the patriarchy feels threatened by women, women's bodies are under a very specific scrutiny, and women have are are pressured into looking as small as possible. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So, and that's what I'm going to say, right? So, so when the patriarchy is threatened by women, their bodies must be smaller and smaller and smaller. Whereas when the patriarchy isn't really focusing on women or her rights or anything like that, she's allowed to have a fuller figure, uh, a more body positive kind of body. And so what I'm noticing right now with the popularization of Y2K, right? Because if you look at like in the 60s, the civil rights movement, and again, the patriarchy was being threatened. And so women's bodies were being smaller, right? They had to have a smaller 
imprint, impact, physical being in that space, right? Take up less space. And then uh, the 70s was still slender. 80s was more of a power movement by women, right? Women were fighting. And yet still, uh, the figure was the figure that was in, that was popular was still small. And yet, in terms of fashion, women's style kind of got more masculine, almost androgynous, right? They had the the shoulder pads and more of like a, a an androgynous body, more mask and the combination of both femme and mask, right? And it also had a lot of situations in terms of, you know, uh, what was happening? HIV and all that other stuff was going on. And women in fashion were still trying to ha- take up more space and yet um, their body type, while still androgynous and a little more masculine in in that way, um, still small, still slender. And then the 90s happen. And in the 90s, women were really fighting for their rights and it was like the ultra slender. Kate Moss, super skinny. I think they called it, it was a drug. I'm not going to say the drug. started with an H. Her, her <clears throat> chic. And uh, it wasn't even about being fit. It was about being as small as possible, taking up as, as little amount of space as possible. That was the 90s. I remember that. And because I grew up in that time, hold on, I need to drink. Hold on. Just because I grew up in that time, for my entire adolescence on, society made me believe that no matter how small I was, I was never small enough. I was always, I always saw myself as a bigger girl. Um, and I was never really fat or heavy or that overweight. Like, you know, you think there are times when I was a little heavier, sure. Um, but even when I was you know, in college, and at that time, it was at my smallest, I was probably 125, maybe 130, I still felt like I was heavy, I was overweight, like I was never a skinny girl. And that kind of mindset just kind of sits with you and constantly just wanting to take up less and less space and be less of, have less presence and that was like 2005, yeah, the 2000s, right? And then, um, but I will say, because the 90s were so, were so scarring for a lot of people, there was kind of a shift into still slender, but like a healthy slender, you know, not, not enunciated. But again, still a tiny figure. And I remember... By the 2010s or so, and 2010s and on, women's figures, it was like this huge body positive movement. Um, and women had to, it, you were okay in your own skin, right? Like you could be overweight, you could be super skinny, you could be curvy, whatever. I mean, the ideal, I guess, really was like, who was popular, Kim Kardashian, right? And she was she was curvy, but she was still very slim, right? The skinny curve. But the fact that she had boobies and a butt and all that other stuff, that was a big deal for me because I was always a curvy woman and I didn't see that a lot. Like when I was growing up, it was the super skinny, skinny women. And I was like, I... My body just doesn't fit that. I fit in jeans that are like a small slash extra small, but getting them to fit over <laughs> over my hips 
is such a fight. It's such a fight that I feel like maybe I'm not this size, but then I button it and zipper it and it fits beautifully, but like getting it over my curves is a situation, right? And so that was like the 2010s on. And then the Trump administration came in and he put into place these incredibly conservative Supreme Court justices and the evangelical Christians came in and the war on women really became something in in the limelight and it was devastating right like we had moved forward so much and for Roe v Wade to be overturned I just don't I don't think I don't think any men can really understand the blow and the devastation of a woman suddenly having less rights than her mother in a country that is supposed to be land of the free. And because men don't have to worry about that. Men will never, ever have to worry about anybody saying anything or having laws on their bodies ever. But women constantly at war with everyone and the government on what they can do, what they look like, where they can go, what they're wearing. Um, and now bodily, we, women don't even have bodily autonomy depending on what state you're in. Like it is insane. It's mind blowing to me. And what is happening now that women's bodies and women's rights are now on the line again, what's happening? What's in vogue? Now that Ozempec is popular, right? People are losing weight again. What's popular? That super skinny body. And what I'm, what I'm realizing is when women are under attack and when women start to have their voices and start to fight against the patriarchy, the body that becomes popular is the one that makes them as small as possible. And so I guess in a way, when you see this tiny body come into vogue, maybe we're doing something right. In the sense of the patriarchy is threatened, right? In the sense of women want their rights back, women are fighting for bodily autonomy, fighting to be whole humans treated equally under the law just as men are, right? And while it sucks that society tells us to be small and tiny and not take up space, I think it is a show of the times when that body is in vogue, when that body, that tiny, tiny body is popular, it's telling women to make themselves small again because because the patriarchy is threatened by us. And when that happens, that's a good thing because it means we're doing something right. We're fighting, right? It sucks. And, and for young women and girls, they don't understand that, right? When I was young, I didn't know we were fighting for rights or my body or to be paid equally or any of those things. I just knew that if people wanted to like me or respect me, I had to be small. But the reality is you don't gain respect by taking up less space. Respect comes from who you are on the inside and how you shift that and People treat you the way you let them treat you. And when you start setting up boundaries, things start changing. Unfortunately, young girls and young women kind of are forced to just go with what the media tells them, might not realize what's going on in the real world and why these things are happening and why they end up with like this mental 
struggle of never being good enough because they're not small enough. But the reality is it doesn't matter what you look like or what size you are or any of those things. What matters truly is if you're happy and if you feel good. And I, as somebody who has been fighting my whole life to be smaller, what I'm realizing and what I realized to get to this size is it was never about being smaller. It's about being healthy and fit and strong and powerful. It's about fighting what society has deemed me as, right? You're a beautiful woman, but that's all you are. You, you, you can't achieve anything. Just you're not smart because you're beautiful, right? They just, when people see beauty, a lot of times it, it's respected. People trust people who are pretty, but in the same vein, there are a lot of people that see beauty and immediately think they are a threat or they deserve to be cut down in some way or they need to be taken down or there's something wrong with them. And generally in my experience, I've always been told to use what I have physically because I'm not smart enough to get to where I need to be. I need to use my physicality in order to achieve my goals. And that kind of thinking is so detrimental to people, to me, to women, but also just like, I am really fucking smart. And it took so long for me to recognize my own power of my own mind that there's so much that I'm realizing now that I missed out on because I couldn't be both. I couldn't be both beautiful and intelligent. I could only be beautiful, you know? That's what society says. And that kind of mindset is devastating. What I will say though is I'm in a place now that I recognize my power, not just in the way that I look, because I'm fit now and I'm proud of the body that I have, um, that I fought for, that I ate my healthy ass way to, uh, but also the smarts that it took to get there, um, the way I figured out how to do it. Nobody taught me anything. Nobody guided me. I did this. You know, I achieved it. I paid attention. I watched and saw what was working, what wasn't working. And I figured it out. And not just like the smarts of doing that, but also the ability in other aspects of my life, the, be, the ability to connect with people, to speak well, to make connections where we were in history back, you know, when things were happening to how we got to where we are today, you know, and, and the, the critical thinking skills it takes to be able to do that. And I'm, I'm just saying, I'm more than just a pretty face and it feels really good to know that myself. Nobody has to tell me that, I know that. But I want you to recognize that about yourself. So often we are told that we are not smart enough, we're not pretty enough, we're not tall enough, we're not skinny enough, we're not enough. But that's not true. And you need to recognize your skills and appreciate your abilities and have love for yourself because 
life is hard enough. What I realized, which is the most important lesson of all this, right? The bodies in vogue and the body issues I had when I was younger to even now, I'm still struggling, but I'm paying attention because there are things that I, I still want to look a certain way because that's what makes me happy. I feel strong and powerful. And with this body, I can do more, you know? Like I just, I can. And there's so many things that are open to me now because of the body that I have and the way that I look. Uh, and I'm not just talking about pretty privilege. I'm talking about being fit and healthy and climbing mountains and hiking and exploring, you know, going into the city and walking for miles. So the most important thing that I learned so far in the life that I've lived is that you need to love yourself and you need to respect yourself and you need to acknowledge all of the things that you have achieved and that you did it. You did it. You know? But yeah. Anyway, fashion. Body is in vogue. Super skinny. Don't let society tell you who you are. You tell society who you are. Anyway, I hope you have an amazing day. I just wanted to sit and chat about that. I thought it was a really interesting thing that I noticed. Um, and I, I, just, I just wanted you to be aware that now that the skinny body is back in vogue, it means we're doing something right and exciting changes like women having bodily autonomy again are going are gonna to come back. And that is probably the most exciting thing about all of it. Anyway, thank you so much for spending time with me today. Have an amazing Monday and an amazing week. Uh, stay tuned. I have a lookbook and a makeup tutorial coming. And what else? Oh, we're going to have some travel content coming as well. So stay tuned. And I will see you tomorrow. Until next time. 